Duck and Dukes. But I keep telling you, said Duck, there are no Dukes. They were fine and stately, but they've all been scrapped. Peter Sam goggled in horror. This is dreadful, he wailed. The thing controller said the owner said the Duke said he was coming to our centenary to open our extension round the lake, and now he's scrapped, and Scarlo and Renaeus's birthday will be spoilt. Oh dear, oh dear. He bustled away with his empty coaches to tell this bad news. I think, said Scarlo, the duck was pulling your wheels. No, Scarlo, he was quite serious. He always jokes like that, chuckled Scarlo. But no one agreed, and they argued so loudly that the thing controller came to stop the noise. They told him about Duck, but he paid no attention. I've no time for his nonsense now, he snapped. There's a change in tomorrow's work. Scarlo, you will meet the Duke at eleven instead of half past ten. And he hurried away. If there is a Duke, said Duncan, and they were all too tired to argue any more. They spent a gloomy night but cheered up next morning when the cleaners greeted the birthday engines with an all-metal band. Drivers and firemen joined in, and even the thin controller banged a metal plate as loudly as anyone. The engines punctuated the music with their whistles. The owner laughed and held his ears. Presently he looked at his watch. That's enough, he ordered. So Rusty, Sir Handel and Duncan went at once to find their coaches. Visitors crowded the big station. They wanted to go places along the line to watch the celebrations. Peter, Sam and Renaeus had carefully practiced their parts. Passengers in Agnes, Ruth, Lucy, Jemima and Beatrice all wore clothes of 1865. Renaeus had to pull them behind Peter Sam's television train, not too close and not too far away, so that the cameramen could take their pictures. Visitors waved as they went by and at last they reached the special sidings near the extension, where they settled down to wait. Listen, said Peter Sam at last. Here's Carlowey. They're cheering him. Good, answered Renaeus. Perhaps that will make up for his disappointment over the Duke. Scarlowey wasn't disappointed at all. I've brought the Duke, I've brought the Duke, I've brought the Duke, I've brought the Duke, he puffed, and triumphantly came to a stand between the two trains. A distinguished-looking man stepped out, climbed to Scarlow's footplate and drove him on the new line round the lake and back again. Then, standing on Scarlow's front buffer beam, he said, Ladies, gentlemen and engines, I have pleasure in declaring your lovely lakeside loop line now open. Peter Sam could bear it no longer. Excuse me, sir, Duke, he burst out. Are you real? There was shocked silence. The Duke smiled. Scarlow said you'd be listening to Duck, he answered. Duck thinks Dukes were great western engines, but Dukes are really people. I am happy to assure you, Peter Sam, that I am a real live Duke. I'll give Duck Dukes, muttered Peter Sam, but he was sternly hushed. The Duke turned to the owner. I congratulate you, sir, on your remarkable railway. It must be a record indeed to have two locomotives in regular service and both a hundred years old. Long life then, and good running to Scarlo and Renaeus, your famous old engines. The cheering and clapping died away. Speech! shouted someone, and the cry was taken up. Go on, Renaeus, whispered the owner. So rather nervously, the old engine began. Thank you, your grace, and everyone, for your kind wishes. You've given us both a lovely hundredth birthday. But, Your Grace, Scarlo and I aren't the only record engines. We've got twin brothers. Talaclin and Dolgoch were built at the same time as us, so they are hundred too, and they're still at work. Their railways are towing in Wales. Please go and see them, Your Grace, and everybody, and wish them many happy returns from Scarlo and Renaeus, their little old twins.'